Hallelujah. Well, go ahead and open your Bibles to the third chapter of John's Gospel. Um, we'll be reading from the 16th verse. And uh, we're, talking, we're talking about Zoe life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, or uh, Zoe. Zoe is, is, is the Greek word there. And um, God gave his only son so we could have Zoe life. Now, Zoe life is redundant, but you understand we're using that as descriptive, uh, kind of using Zoe as descriptive, uh, so we could have Zoe, really. And that is life in the manner that God possesses it, life in the absolute sense, life that the Father has within himself, that he gave the incarnate son to have within himself, and has given to the son to give to us that we have in us. Jesus came that we might have the same life that the Father has. Amen? Um, <clears throat> we must... Uh, we have within us the essence of God, but we must be obedient or limit the power of the eternal life in us. In other words, uh, we, we need to allow that life to function and work in us. Every believer has the ability to be dominated by Zoe. However, sin, selfishness must die before it can be manifest through us. If we want to be dominated by Zoe, we must be dominated by the Word, walk in love, and be obedient to the Father. Um, understand this, that the, the life is to dominate us, but if you don't let it dominate you, it won't dominate you. That's, that's the interesting thing, you know, although we've been redeemed by Christ, although the greater one's living in us, he doesn't uh, rule us as, as a master rules a slave. It is only by our willing participation do the things of God operate and function and, and manifest in our life. If you stop cooperating, they stop working. They just do. So, you stop tithing, you'll stop seeing blessing. Yeah, all right. So God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that we might have that Zoe. Um, G, John 5, 26, Jesus says this. He says, um, for as the father hath Zoe in himself, so hath he, given, uh, hath he given to the son to have Zoe in himself. This life is, that's in the father is in the son. Zoe, the very nature and essence of God. Um, when God created man, he breathed into him uh, his eternal life force into the man. Remember in Genesis 2-7, he breathed in him the breath of life, man became a living soul. Um, Adam contained God's life. Um, Adam had, was a, was a replica of God. Can somebody nix say the heat in here? We're going to be hanging tobacco in here, and then they'll be calling us a cult church for having tobacco in the church. Um, I grew up, you know, I grew up in where I grew up in Eastern Carolina. We always had a saying, it's hot enough. It's, woo, I bet that was pleasant. It's hot enough to cure tobacco in here. <laughs> so, and that's hot. Trust me. Praise God. All right. Bill now has the opportunity to go back and edit tonight. Hallelujah. Or just let it go out there and just everybody get a laugh. Hallelujah. That sounds better, doesn't it? <laughs> he, said, he said, you know, that really sounds like a good point. Just have people just see, uh, see pastors the other side. Hallelujah. Um, Adam contained God's life. That when God formed man from the dust of the ground, and, and, and you know, that, that body was not alive. It was, just, it was just a body on the ground. But it says in verse 7 of Genesis 2, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. If you'll say that out in the Hebrew, it actually says man became a speaking spirit. God took up his spirit and put in man, placed him in that body. And, and, and that body was just on the ground. And it was, and, and actually it was neither dead nor alive. It was just there. Understand? Because it had not lived. It had not known life. It was just a body that was there. Then God breathed into it the breath of life, and it became, man became a speaking spirit or a living soul. And so that body, for the first time, flesh knew life. That was, a, that was, that was just um, almost like a, an inert flesh, or, but it was not really neither dead nor alive, because death means the separation of the spirit from, from the body. Well, man's spirit had never been placed in there. So it wasn't separated. He had never known it. 
Okay? And um, so it was, it was created, but then God breathed into it. Or if you kind of understand the word breath and life, and that breath and wind and spirit, in both the Hebrew and the Greek come from, come from their same words. And, and obviously different words in Hebrew and Greek. But they all mean the same. They all come from the same root word. Life, breath, and wind all come from the word, same word in Greek and Hebrew. In Greek it's pneuma. Um, so but in, it's a different word in Hebrew, obviously. That body, God breathed in him the breath of life. Or you could say God spirited in him the spirit of life. God took of his spirit and placed in there. Um, the, the, um, the psalmist says, What is man that thou art mindful of? Thou hast created him a little lower than the angels. But really, that's, that's uh, the Hebrew there is Elohim, God. That's the word used for God, and, and, and literally meaning God in the, in the, in the manif uh, in plurality of three or more. So, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> the, um, the Word itself, so, so man's body has in it, or had in it until the fall. Jesus had it in him. Adam knew it. Adam and Eve were the last to know it before Jesus came. Because of the fall. Okay, but then the word, it's the word has God's Zoe in it. Uh, it the Zoe life has creative ability. God created everything from his uh, life. Look at John 1, 1 through 4 real quick. The Gospel of John back over there. Now I know you cannot be suffering from turkey overdose at this point. It's almost a week later. You should have been detoxed by now. I mean, been detox. All right. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made. In Him was life. And the life was the light of men. And that light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That it will. Anyway, I should have stopped at verse 4. Notice that, that in Him was life. And the life was the light of men. It's, it, so God is life. And He created all things. So everything was created from Zoe life. God created everything to have life in it. Death is alien to God. It is opposite of God. It is not what God is. God is life. Even, even in the New Testament, we start talking about certain spiritual laws. It says the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. They are, the, the sin and death and destruction and misery and all those things are, are alien. They're foreign to God's existence. They're opposite of him. They are they're antithetical to him. They're not who he is. And so... Um, when we're born again, we are recreated. Old things pass away, all things become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. That life spirit and recreates it in its original intent and image to represent the life of God. Now, let's look over in Hebrews. We may not get past far my notes. We don't know. <clears throat> but look in Hebrews. Let's see here. Let's look at Hebrews 1. We'll just start in verse 1. God, who at sundry or different times and in different manners, spake in, the, uh, in time past unto the fathers by his prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. Jesus... Well, remember, Jesus remember, uh, had life in himself. For his son had life, in, you know, he had life in himself, the Zoe life of God. Jesus was the express image of the personage of, of the Father, right? Upholding all things by his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And he goes on and talks about several different things. But notice here, he is the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. Man was created as a replica. Uh, of God. What is man that thou look over Psalm? I believe the eighth Psalm. Or Psalm something, verse 8. But. <clears throat> verse 
verse 4 says, For what is man, that's the chapter 8, that thou art mindful of him, and the Son of Man, that thou visitest him. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, again, Elohim, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Now notice that God made man a little lower than Elohim, a little lower than himself. Why? Now why is man a little lower than God? Although he, he looks like God, represented by God when he created him, because he was created by God. Okay? And so he was the expression of his image, but he was not God himself. The very, all the attributes of God was in man. Light, life, and, and love. Now, if you'll study the book of First John, it is, you know, God is light, God is life, God is love. Those are the three main themes of First John. Um, in, in, in John's epistles, you'll read that, you'll find that as a common thread, light, light, and love coming out of his epistles. Some people say, God is love, but he's also light. He's also love, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, life. Amen. He's not just love. He's all, you know, and so you, some people get weirded out with stuff. And they'll start saying, God is love, and you know, so, and then they'll go, love is God. That's not true. And I had a big, you know, well, I, I actually had a short debate with somebody on the internet one night. They said, you know, that love is God is, is, is you know, and, he started, and, I, and somebody said something about it. He says, no, you can't ever convince me I'm wrong. I just went and got the Greek and gave, gave some Greek commentary and said, da 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 boom, boom, boom. The Greek will not allow you to say it that way. When you study that out in the Greek, the Greek, the way, the way it's structured, you can't reverse it. The, the Greek structure prohibits the reversal of that context. You can't go, God is love, therefore love is God. The Greek, you know, it, 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 it's, it's kind of like saying love is God. You don't, no, 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 no. God is love, or God, one of the attributes of God is that he is love, but that love is not God. Because then, you know, you can get weird, you know, light, God is light. God, the light is God. Saying It's the exact same thing. Say that this light here, if God is light and light is God, then this light shining down here is God. And that's not true. God is a divine personality. And, and I don't have all, but I have all that somewhere where uh, you can't reverse that terminology because of the structure of the language. It, it doesn't allow that. Of course, that, that was the, the guy never said another word. <laughs> <laughs> you know, listen, you, go, you don't post stuff on the internet if you don't know what you're talking about. All right? It's just not smart. <laughs> but it gives people like me an opportunity to go find out if, if you're really right or wrong and prove you wrong. Hallelujah. And I'm not doing it for that reason, but when, you, when I know something's wrong, yeah. and people are, oh, yes. Love is God. Fruitcake. Yeah. Amen? Just be a little, you, we need to be a little more diligent about studying before we make bold declarations of stuff. But you make, God made, was made man a little lower than himself. Now, Jesus here in Hebrews says that he's the expressed image of his person. Jesus came and represented the Father. The life that, it, that, that God is, is in us. And at the new birth, that life began to take root. We were born again. We became uh, heirs of, of God, joint heirs with Christ. Amen. Old things passed away. Oh, behold, all things became new. But the new thing was really just a reestablishment of the original new thing, which was the life of God in man. Man was designed, and then think about this now, his body was designed to house the very nature of God. Man's body was designed to do that. Now, which is why when Adam and Eve were created, they were created in the glory. Look, look back at Hebrews, it says this, um, the bright, who, who being the brightness of his glory. We got, a, we got twice in the Bible, we have a manifestation of original creation after original creation. When Moses came out of the Temple Mount, we had a really almost a pseudo manifestation where he had been in the presence of God so long for four, those 40 days that his face shone so bright with the glory of God they had to cover it with, a, with a, a veil. But that was simply like being a moon. He was reflecting the glory instead of it coming from inner. 
the, the, so the, but the next case is what we call, was referred to oftentimes as the Mount of Transfiguration. When the disciples, Peter, James, and John went with Jesus up on the mount, and then um, Moses and Elijah came down and, and to minister to him, and, and when they awoke, they saw Jesus, and his raiment became uh, bright. I believe it's the noonday sun. Uh, sparkling raiment. What happened? The glory that was in him was let out for just a moment. They got to see what original create a, a really really in limit in limited form. They got to see a lim a limit limited expression of what original creation was like. The reason Adam and Eve didn't have clothes and didn't know they were naked was they were clothed in the glory. That life that God created in that body, created to house the glory of God, shone through to the extent that you didn't see their nakedness. And they didn't see it. Only when they committed high treason and they, were, they, they died spiritually. You know, like uh, somebody said one time, Adam was the first man to be born again. He was born from life unto death. Now, not born again in the sense of the new birth, being you know, born from death unto life. But Adam was reborn in the garden, but it wasn't from life, death unto life. It was from de life unto death. He died spiritually. He was born of Satan's nature. And the glory went out. And instantly they knew they were naked. Wow, the glory went out. <clears throat> Once the light went out, you could see everything. Now, some of these... Some of these um, Eastern religions, to some degree, now do you understand what I'm saying? To some degree, have it right. You know, even Yoda had it right. We're not crude flesh. We're luminous beings, we are. Luminous, are we? Or some whatever how you would say it. <laughs> you know? Um, I'm here glad that Disney got Star Wars. It'll be a new one in two years. We don't have to wait for Lucas to go through his psychological whatever it is to come bring it out in 2021, which is what he said he was going to do. We get it in two years. Hallelujah. Um, we are luminous beings. Now, not, you, you, that's, why, that's why you, you got to look at world religions and, and some of these other things. They, they get kind of weird with stuff. But there is an, there's an element of truth in what they're saying. Man is a spirit. And the born again man is a spirit of light. Amen. And when that's let out, that's glorious. There's glory there manifest. Hallelujah. We get, um, sometimes in certain meetings, you'll get manifestations of that corporate glory. And we're we'll talking about the glory cloud coming in or whatever, you know, you know or, or the manifestations of the glory of God. Where, but it's always light. Even in the form of a cloud, it's light. Amen. And so, uh, man is born, when you're born again, you're born of the nature of God. And, and, and you take on that nature, the very essence of who God is becomes your spiritual DNA. You become a being of light. Because you're born of light. You're born of life. Now, if you were to be able to step out of your body, you would see the glory of man. Amen. Think of how bright the, the glory, the face of God lights heaven. Why right, just say wow. wow? Now say it backwards. Wow. Say it upside down. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Somebody was quick. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. That is in us. Amen. That, that, um, and so Romans 6, 4 tells us to walk in this newness of life. Think about this now. There's a, there's a light, there's a life of light in us. It's functioning in us, it's working in us, waiting to get out. Um, Romans 6, 4 tells us, therefore, as we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the, listen to this, by the glory of the Father, even so, we should walk in newness of life. We're born again by the glory of the Father. Now, a lot of times, we, now we, we, we react to the glory. Now, understand the glory and the anointing run hand in hand. Manifestations of the glory, manifestations of the anointing. 
um, anointing would be specific manifestation and purposes of, of the glory. Okay. And if God shows up, God's glory is there. I understand when I say show up. Don't, don't get too weirded out with that statement. He's not like he's not here. But there are times God manifests himself in different ways. I believe in the training and developing in the, in the, uh, of the believer, but also don't, we can't discount the other attributes of God's manifestations. You know, and just kind of discount them. We need to train believers to grow up in the Word, grow up in faith, and, you know, and not hype them. But at the same time, God does just come and do specific things for the purpose of stirring up his people. We don't live for that. You can't live for that. You cannot live waiting for the next move. Hello, what happens if you drown while you're waiting for the move? You better be swimming. <laughs> Amen. But man, no, notice that here it says that um, we are to walk because we're raised up just like Jesus by the glory of the Father. We're raised up the same way. We're to walk in this newness of life. What life? This Zoe life that's in us, that's been imparted into us. So the inner man, the, the man on the inside is born of God, has the nature of God, has the attributes of God, and even looks like God. Why? Because we're born of him. I mean, you know, you can, you, some of you probably go, Nathan looks like his mom and Nathan looks like his daddy. I think he looks like both of you. I mean, you know, that's how people are. You know, they look at people and go, well, you know, and you'll go to people, oh, you look just like your daddy. And we're going, no, they don't. But they think so. They see something in that. And, um, you know, and Jesse looks just like her, you know, uh, her mama. No, Jesse looks like her daddy. And people say that, you know, and then Shannon, oh, she looks just like her dad. And she looks, they, they, they get that a little bit just because of her dark brown eyes and, and my darker eyes and her eyes are a little more deep set and mine are. Uh, so some people see that and they say, oh, she looks just like her daddy. Now she looks more like her mama. And then Nathan, you know, he's just kind of a, he's kind of a half breed. That's just, you know, he's half me, half her. A little more on, the, on her side of the family. But when we were born of God, we took on his nature. We looked like him. In the spirit. And remember they called them Christians at Antioch, which means Christ-like. And literally, literally the term Christian means little Christ. That's what it literally means. Not just Christ-like, it means little Christ. All right? So... Uh, we're to walk in this newness of life that's been imparted to us. This, this, this living light manifests in us. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You upset, you upset, they see you coming a mile away. Or further than a mile away, a spiritual mile. So every country mile, a spiritual mile. They see you a spiritual mile down the road. Hallelujah. That's a new one. So, this light that's working in us, the light of God, we are, the, we are the express image of his person. Understand this. There is a place we are to live from different than where we have lived. Now, quite frankly, unregenerated man lives from the realm of carnality. Actually, the word of God tells you he, that they live out of that carnal mind. The spirit is desolate of domination. It doesn't, it no longer, it doesn't dominate man. When man fell in the garden, he became a flesh dominated, carnal mind ruled being. We see that not long later, not much time after the fall of man, uh, after uh, Cain and Abel are born, that, um, you know, <clears throat> Cain rises up because he gets mad and kills his brother. All over a, a sacrifice disagreement. Because God did not accept Cain's sacrifice. Now, there's not a lot said there, but I've got to interpret and read between the lines that God demanded blood and Cain knew it. God's not unjust. So God would not have rejected his sacrifice without him kind of go walking up going, well, I don't understand why he didn't take mine. It, and it, God's not unjust. We had to, we, he had to know. Just by, just by knowing the character and nature of God, although it's not stated there. And I don't think I'm really it's in, in supposition here. I believe this. Uh, you have to see that, God, that they, he knew. Well, what, was he, what should he have done? He should have bartered for a lamb. 
I am guarantee you he bartered for meat when he was hungry. Come on. But he felt like his was good enough. See, it's, it's, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. Life had to be shed to cover man's death. Life of the flesh is in the blood. Not just human flesh, life of the flesh. If any, if any creature is in its blood. So when, when um, Cain rejected that, we see him respond from where? Not from a spirit of life because he's spiritually dead now. Spiritually rebellious. But from his carnal mind. Amen? Amen? It's in that carnal unregenerated and responded from it, which governed his flesh. His flesh responded in anger. The emotion of anger caused his flesh to rise up and slay his brother. All over a sacrifice. Wow. Can you imagine? Okay. God didn't like my corn. I'm going to kill you. That's pretty carnal. Hello? That, that's pride. And arrogance, especially after God had rejected it. You go ahead and take it out on your brother? Something's wrong there. All right. So the gift of God is his life or eternal life, that we're to live from that. The wages of sin is death. Obviously, that's, that's true. Death is separation from God. Um, the salary you receive for disobeying God is separation from his life and his benefits. You can't expect to receive blessings without paying the price of obedience. If you think that you're going to be able to go out and do whatever you want to do under any circumstance, at any time, at any point, and you're still going to get blessed because you're under grace, you are sorely and sadly mistaken. And anybody that preaches that is preaching a lie. Amen. God, listen, when God wrote and, and, and had, had written in, in Isaiah 119, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. He didn't change just, you, just because we got a new covenant. Willingness and obedience are still at your, are, are characteristics of the people who receive from God. I, I, I remember first when I first discovered this 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 lunatic grace message. Now, this, now there is a biblical grace message, but the stuff that these people preach now is not biblical. It's lunatic. It's got doctrines of devils written all over it. That's the kindest way I can say it. But I remember I, I, I talked to somebody and, and uh, I said, we know God told Adam. Adam had never known sin. Think about this now. God created Adam out of the dust of the ground, breathed him the breath of life, took out of his rib, put him to sleep, took a rib out, created Eve. She was, she was bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Um, born, created, really created out of the very plan of God, out of his breath, out of his spirit, had never known sin. Had never known disobedience. Yet God gave him something and told him to obey him. Do not eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You know what this person told me? They didn't have the Holy Ghost like we do. God took spirit of himself, put in man. You can't get any more of the Holy Ghost than that. I mean, to be actually created with imperfection and no sin of the very essence of God created. He didn't have the Holy Ghost like we did. We do. It's like going out here to a stop sign and arguing with it that it's a go sign. You're a go sign. You're green. You're just wasting your breath, aren't you? I think about a change if they put up, the station's supposed to go through and just put go on them. Put stop, don't put stop, but put go. Let's be positive, all right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. No, even in the new birth, there, there, there's obedience. Even as a Christian under grace, there's obedience. The Bible said, and I think if anybody, if anybody was under grace, ever walked on the planet, it was Jesus. Amen. The Bible says he was obedient even unto the death of the cross. 
Now, what am I getting at? There's a life in us, but we have to walk in obedience to God's commands. And there are New Testament commands that throughout the Bible, that throughout the New Testament. Don't even read your Old Testament. Just be a heathen. <laughs> Amen. Just read the, forget the, the Gospels. Don't even read them. Just read the epistles and you'll find commands in there. Yeah. In letters written to the church. Yeah. The life of God in us empowers us and enables us, but you still have to be obedient to release it. You have to allow it to function and operate. I, you know, I, I sometimes like, you know, this, this wall receptacle over here has the power in it. There's enough power in there to light up your life. <laughs> if you don't believe in sunshine, you got any bobby pins? Okay. You got any, any metal of any kind? Paper clip? No. Nope. You're not going to do it even if you do, are you? No. Nope. <laughs> If you got a bobby pin, just run over here and stick it in there real quick. Well, you'll, be, you'll, be, you'll be doing some kind of shout and dance or whatever. J.D.'s brother just got his hand cooked today or yesterday. He, a 450-amp box blew up, and he's got first-degree burns on the back. And second here, his fingernails are underneath. His fingers are black down here. He got hit with a 450-amp uh, box. He got loaded. He got, he got jilted. Volt. I said, oh, amp. Volt box. 450 volt box. So he's working, he's working on a, a main... There's a big power supply going to some building somewhere. It's not, it's not what you have in your house, okay? I mean, it, it does not look good. It's, it's, they peel all the skin off a couple of times. Um, but I, I guarantee you he was doing some kind of song and dance if he was still standing. Yeah. Hello. I mean, you know, there's power in that body. And there's enough power in that, that, that receptacle to light up your life. But if you don't regulate it, according to the laws by which it functions, it will not bless you. Yeah. Now, forget the negative side of sticking bobby pins in. I was trying to go, I was going to give us an example, but Sunshine just won't cooperate. <laughs> her, her coat would just glow out in the parking lot. We wouldn't even need lights out there. She'd just walk out in the parking lot with her orange coat on, glowing. But even, even, not even operating it negatively. For those to, to, to use the laws and that govern it and, and, and regulate that power positively will not function unless you operate them. And see, there is a life in you, but if you don't govern that and allow it to function according to the laws that govern it, it won't bless you. It'll just sit there basically inert. Um, if you go unplug that tree with our little lights on it, we have on there all the time, that, that power will sit there and will not do a thing. Now, if you see the bobby pin in, that's a misuse of it. It will cook you. We'll probably get some high notes we've never heard you sing before. But at the same time, we take that, recept that plug, push it into that receptacle, turn on that little switch, and all of a sudden... The power that was been there all along has been tapped into. Now is functioning and operating and producing what it was designed to produce. There's a life in you, the Zoe of God, that is designed to produce the light of God out of you, the love of God out of you, the life of God out of you. But you have to tap into it the right way. Sin is not the way that's misused. Uh, I can do anything I want to do. Plug in that bobby pin. Well, you know, well you'll tap into that power, but it'll go, you'll go cross grains of it. Hello? So sin is like sticking the bobby pin in the electrical socket. You will tap into that life. But you'll be cross grains of it. And it won't bless you. Man, well, may not kill you. I've, I've, I've done some stupid stuff before electricity. I don't do it again anymore. Uh, Larry and Daryl and Daryl. Alan's the other Daryl. Larry wasn't here. That's why we got in trouble. 
I went back there was going to fi figure out how to find out what breaker was. And I said, I just took a piece of 14-2 wire and cut it off and skinned the ends. And I was going to go, because we had a breaker that, was, that had gone bad on the inside. We couldn't tell which one it was. I was going to trace it. This is, this is a disclaimer. <laughs> Do not try this at home, at work, or anywhere. <laughs> Ever. So what I was going to do is I was going to take that wire and go down. And I was, and I was just going to let the, the, the circuit run around. And as soon as I found the one that was bad, we were going to pull that out and go get a new one and replace it. And so he's standing there behind my shoulder with the flashlight watching. <laughs> and I don't know why I did what I did. But you know, that when you do, when, when, look, when you got Daryl and Daryl Electric Company doing stuff, you understand that you do stupid stuff. I knew better. But just in the, in the moment, instead of going on one circuit around to the other side to bypass that one breaker and find out which one was bad, I cross-phased it. I put it on two circuits at the same time. And as soon as I did that, it went, pow! My fingers had black smoke on them. I back, I mean, I knocked him down, backing out. I think I, I, I I'm not sure whether it was wet our pants or not, but if it was, it was him, not me. Anyway, no, I'm just, he didn't. I'm just messing. We felt so stupid. I mean, he didn't even do it. He just felt stupid being with me. <laughs> I think that's what it was. He said, I should have known better than to go with him and do that project. <laughs> should have said, look, I'll put the flashlight right up here. I'm out of here. <laughs> what happened? I got cross grains of the laws that govern that electricity. And thank God I'm here to tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> I still look back. That's grace. That is grace. <laughs> <laughs> you did something really dumb. Yeah. Now, there are laws that govern the life of God. Operating. And, and, and part of one of those laws is the law of obedience. Obey God, doing what God asks you to do, the way God asks you to do it, how God asks you to do it. Amen? You know, walking in love, we have to obey to walk in love. Because there's going to be times you don't want to. It requires an obedience to do what the Scripture says and walk in love. When the Bible says, and walk in love, it, it's not a request. The tone is, is a command. We still have to obey. In other words, if we're going to tap into the life of God that's in us, we don't want to go cross grain, so we've already, kind of, we've already kind of covered that, right? The same thing, we don't want to go cross grain. But that doesn't, listen, it's simply not sinning. Does not produce its, its, its effects in the positive realm. Simply not going cross grains of a wall receptacle does not produce the benefits of electricity in a positive manner. It simply means you haven't gone cross grains of it and gone the wrong way with it. In order to receive the benefits of it on a positive way, you have to, you have to go that way. And the same thing is true about the life of God in you. In order for it to function and operate in you, you have to walk in accordance with the laws that govern the life of God. Okay, part of that's obedience. Um, you know, sin reduces us to mere men. Sin, sin is counter, the counter man to the life of God. Um, we want, want to, we want to be dominated by the Zoe of God and tap into that and allow it to function and flow. So basically what we want to do is we want to learn to live out of our spirit with the laws that govern the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. Now let me say this. You can't be partially doing the good thing and at the same time doing the bad thing and it still be a blessing. If you got that light plugged in and you go over there and stick the bobby pin in, it's still going to go cross grains. You might, that light might continue burning, but you're going to get cooked in the process. You know, it's not, it's, it's not a you can, you can mesh the two together thing. We need to move away from the things that are, that are counterproductive to the life of God and learn to live out of that life and let it be productive in us. Okay? Um, so you, you, we want to be we want to be um, dominated by this life. You got to be stay connected to the life of God. You got you got to deny your fleshly desires daily. Paul said, "I buffet my body." Now I know some of you thought oh, last week he said I must buffet my body all day long on Thanksgiving, and you probably got away with that one. But you can't do it every day. 
All right. Um, the Zoe life, you know, the, this you got to control your fleshly desires so that the Zoe can manifest through you. And we know it's in you. We know there's electricity in that socket, that receptacle. Which, you know, we got to tap into it. And we want to tap into the Zoe life of God. We want to learn to live from a different place. Now, understand before you were born again, you were trained, you're trained by your, um, if you didn't have Christian parents, you were trained by your unregenerated heat parents. You were trained by the school system. You're trained by society to live out of your flesh. They don't put the all-you-can-eat buffet thing up at, at Golden Corral on television, and they show somebody with a dessert plate yeah, yeah. going to the, to the bar to get a French petite steak with two pommes frites, french fries. Hello. A couple of garden peas and a fourth of a roll and going back down sitting and saying, and it's only $11. No, they show massive plates, massive amounts of food, and what? All for still under ten dollars. Pig out. Everything about society is excess. You're taught and trained to live out of your flesh. Some of y'all are old enough to remember. Now you've seen them some. Now you you still don't see these. You'll see in the, the uh, retro Coke bottles, but they're eight ounces. Before the 8-ounce Coke, there was a 6.5-ounce Coke. It's a little, sh little, little bit shorter, same size bottle, glass, but they were embossed. The word Coca-Cola and stuff were embossed in the glass. And they were better. They're the best Cokes they ever made with those little 6.5-ounce Cokes. And, uh, but people see, then it went 8-ounce. Then it went to 10-ounce. Then it went to 12-ounce. I remember the first 16-ounce bottles coming out. Then I remember Dr. Pepper coming out with a 32-ounce screw-top glass bottle of Dr. Pepper. I would chug the whole thing. <laughs> then it became out, what? Two-liter. Hello? Everything had to be bigger, 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 bigger. We've, tra we've been trained to give into our flesh. Everything in society trains you to give into your flesh. There's no discipline trained in our society. You've lived your, we've lived our whole life. That, then you get born again and start talking about moderation, disciplining the flesh, not living from your flesh, telling your flesh no. How about this term? You deserve it. Everything, you know, you talk about people who if something good happens to them, they deserve it. Why? What made them deserve whatever happened? That's the term everybody uses, they deserve it. Have you heard that? That's all part of the, the narrative of the, of the flesh that you're supposed to have this, you're supposed to have that, you're supposed to have because you deserve it. No one deserves anything, it's God, he deserves the glory. Amen. Isn't that right? You don't deserve the blessings of God. They were purchased for you out of, now there, out of His grace. And His life in you helps you procure things when you walk according to His commandments and His laws. You, what you're doing when you're walking in obedience and you're walking in accordance with His commands and laws, and there are New Testament commands and laws. Hello. You learn to govern or to regulate the life of God in a way that it has a positive and blessing effect. I'm going to tell you something. People saying that because they're under grace, they can do anything they want to do are not giving a positive and productive effect to the life of God. They're bringing a reproach on that by their lifestyle by what they're doing. They're bringing a reproach. They may not die and go to hell next week, but I'm telling you, they're bringing a reproach on what God intended to be a blessing. They're misusing it. Paul said with such clarity, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Next two words, God forbid. Amen. What, what are we saying? Shall we misuse the, the life of God, the blessings of God that we, you know? No. It'll hurt you. It won't bless you. Okay? So, 
we need, look, look over to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. Verse 6 through 10. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined into our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the, of the power may be of God, not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down and not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Now, stop there. Think about what he's talking about here. The light shining is the, 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 the life of God is in us. The light has shone unto us. Amen. The light of his knowledge. Uh, we have the, but we have this treasure in earth vessel. We have this in a fallen vessel. We are housing the glory of God now in a fallen. Listen, even the fallen vessel can house the glory. Think about what it was supposed to be like in the beginning. But that fallen vessel, if it's not governed rightly, will misuse what's in it. It'll, it'll misappropriate it. Amen? But he said they have a treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellent of the, let me get that back straight. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God, not of us. So now we understand this. It's never about us. The life is there with the, with the commands and the guidelines, as it were. Let's just, let's just let's change the word commands to instructions for proper use. Quite frankly, I don't think chainsaws are good for carving a turkey. Just saying, it will. <laughs> You may not want to eat any, well, you, you may not want to eat the minced meat that's left over when you get done. Now, there's proper use for a chainsaw. Let me tell you, one of them is not climbing up a tree, hanging out with one arm like this and doing it. Yes. <laughs> Had limb broke, swung around, kicked my ladder out, and, and me and it went, back, went down and, <laughs> into it. Nathan thought like he lost his daddy. Because <laughs> the whole time I do it, well, once it hit, I went, oh, no, you, what happens with your hand? You're holding on to the chainsaw. <laughs> Boom, right into all the tree limbs and everything, and it's just going. <laughs> Let go, stupid. All right, anyway. There are stories. I could, I could probably write a book. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, how not to do stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Bill, for your support. That's what I call having the bastard pastor. All right. Praise the Lord. There are, in there, the, the, the New Testament, do y'all... Do you understand why the New Testament was written? Now, on one side, it was written as a revelation of God's redemptive work in mankind. What took place? That's part of the Pauline, that's part of the Pauline revelation. Yet at the same time, there is instruction given on how, <coughs> on how to access that redemptive work and properly use it in a way that honors and glorifies God. So yes, there is the redemptive truth that is preached. If you'll study Paul's writings, um, Ephesians is such, a, is such a wonderful example. You know, he spends the first three chapters basically telling you all about what's happened to you and who, what you have in Christ. And he gets to chapter four and says, what were the vocation wherewith you're called? He transitions from the revelation of what we have and who we are in Christ and that kind of thing into how to allow that to operate and function and, 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 and things you shouldn't do to go counterproductive or counter or contrawise or, or cross, cross phase it. 
in the New Testament is full of, of both who we are, what we have in Christ, and what God did for us, and what he does in us, and how the greater one lives in us, and how to access that, and not limit it or be productive to it, functioning in us. It's all throughout the New Testament. It's all in there. So he says here, you know, um, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the, of, the, of, of, of the power may be of God, not of us. We, we come to realize that cooperating with this and doing what he says do allows him to work in us. Amen. Your cooperation, listen, my cooperation, positive cooperation with that electrical circuit is not me producing the light. It's simply I've learned to cooperate and that's what the instructions in the New Testament are teaching us to do, is to learn to cooperate with the Zoe life and the grace, the light, the love that's in us, and not work contrary to it and making it unproductive. Amen. See, God wants us to cooperate with, but I can't go, wow, look at me, I turn, I turn, I'm, you know, we, we say I turn those lights on, but you really didn't. All you did was open up a switch. You, you cooperated with what was trying to take place anyway. See, if you go over here right now, our little wall switch, we have a little one of those plug-in wall switches, you know, for these lights in here just because it's easier instead of unplugging them all the time. You turn that switch off, and that power is one, it, it's, it's, it's sitting, waiting to run through that string of lights and turn those lights on. All flipping that switch does is a cooperation that, that allows, then bridges, because it, it connects and allows it to flow. The instant you make that connection, it flows. It flows. The New Testament instructions, the commands, the demands the, to be obedient are things teaching us how to turn that switch on so that what God has in you can flow. But it also tells you what will cause it not to flow. You turn it off, it won't flow. Amen. You flip the switch the other way, it won't flow. You go in and break off one of the legs, and it won't flow. You put too much on it, and it'll flow too much. It'll, it'll, try, it'll, it'll burn it up. It's not flowing right. You can put in water in there, and it'll really do some stuff. All right? So, the life is in us. The life wants to dominate us, but we have to learn from New Testament instruction how to cooperate so that it flows. It's, it's there to do it. So, the power is not of us, it's of God. You understand that? My obedience is not me saving myself or maintaining my salvation by my obedience. My obedience is opening the gate to allow what God does in his sustaining and, and sanctifying and enabling graces to work in me. But I, I enable that. I connect with that through the New Testament commands of obedience or doing certain things or doing this this way or doing that that way and abstaining from things. Remember we talked about last, the last Sunday we were here, uh, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, before we left town, that, that, Paul, that, that Paul prayed to the church at Colossae, and we'll continue that this coming Sunday, that, you know, uh, in Second Thessalonians, or First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1, that, that this is the will of God, even your sanctification, and then the very next words, that you abstain from fornication. <laughs> Just find it kind of interesting, of all things he could have chosen, the first thing he chose was abstain from fornication, right after you're saying, this is the will of God. Why? Fornication causes your flesh to go contrast to housing. Remember? Where are we? Know you not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? The Bible says that he just joined our harlot as one flesh. You're, you, want to take, you want to house the Holy Ghost and then use it in, in sexual perversion or sexual rebellion and expect it to work right? You're, no, you're going contrast to the laws. So we want, to bring that, we want to bring that out by cooperating 
with God. So, well, because what he wants to do is he wants to have a full, I, I understand we're kind of built, we're kind of, kind of finally going to get here on this. God wants to allow his Zoe life to function and to manifest you at full steam. He wants it to flow out of you. He wants it to be a blessing, not just to you. And this, and we, sometimes we just get caught up with it being for, to us. God's is, is, is a concern as getting it through you as he is getting it to you. He wants it to flow out of you so that it blesses others. See, when people want to talk about they can live in sin and still function in the grace of God, all they care about is it getting it to them. They don't care about if it helps anybody else. Yet the command of the church, the greatest command of the church is going to all the world and preach the gospel to every, every creature. Because God cares about people going to hell or not. He doesn't, you know what? You can still make heaven and not have your Cadillac. Or your Lamborghini or your Porsche or whatever. Amen? But you can't make heaven if you don't have Jesus. He's more concerned with those people than he is. Uh, yeah, I, I know God wants to bless us. I get that. But don't get so caught up with getting blessed that you forget about people going to hell. All right. Praise the Lord. All right.